pledge allegiance. Yes, and I don't have any more. Would you like for me to speak? Certainly, awesome. thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right. Do we have any patron comments? for welcome and celebrations. Awesome. Well, I am excited to welcome and celebrate lots of new teachers today. So um, we're going to go in alphabetical order. If you're wondering when it's going to be your turn, if you didn't see up an agenda, we'll go in alphabetical order. So uh, it's Delana Blair. Okay. Delana is not. But
Uh, like she said, my name is Justin Watt. I'm excited to be here in Alapa and teaching this year. Uh, moving back up here from Texas. Uh, we enjoyed it down there, but we are ready to get home. Uh, Houston was a pretty dope one to raise. I'm from Georgia, but uh, graduated from U of A years ago. Met her and kind of settled down in Arkansas. So we're excited to be here and get to work and hopefully get that pay program for the rest of the states. Our goal. So Ooh, thank you. Very good. Right. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Next. I just graduated from Arkansas Tech University where I played four years of volleyball there under Coach Dukic, or now it's Coach Coleman. She just got married. Um, I majored in health and physical education, but I got a minor in history and also uh, graduated from the Honors College. I'm originally from Norman, Oklahoma, uh, so yes, I am a Sooner fan. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, okay. And I'm really excited. My mom's a middle school, uh, school teacher, so I've grown up in the middle school with that kid running around the hallways with the coaches and really excited to get started and I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. You'll be doing the old woo pick suit. suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My cousins both went to University of Arkansas, so they mm -hmm. Okay, now let's put them on. Okay, raise your hand if you have a child who plays volleyball and you're saying Coach Masters. Okay, great. And have to be, I ran into a volleyball player about two weeks ago and I said, hey, what's going on with Coach? He's like, oh, <laughs> All right. So you know, they're excited about whatever those college drills are that you have to do. All right. Next is Kirsten May, and she is going to be um, our new ALE teacher at Glendale. I also didn't know I had a child. Um, so forgive me for stuttering a little bit. Um, so my name is Kirsten May. I have three boys. All three are here in the Gravit School District starting this year. Um, my husband and I chose Gravit for our family about eight years ago. Uh, we love the small town feel, but right outside of the big city. Um, we felt our boys would have a lot of um, opportunities here. So our oldest is starting high school this year. Our middle starts seventh grade, and then my baby starts kindergarten this year. So um, all of them here in Gravit, so I'm super excited to be here with them. Um, I came from Decatur. Uh, I was there for four years. I did alternative learning and did elementary there. Um, I've adored my time in Decatur. I grateful for it because they saw something in me and gave me the opportunity to try alternative learning and it's absolutely my passion. Um, I've always felt drawn to those kids that needed a little something extra. Always kind of toyed with the idea of going back for special education but alternative learning is a way for me to be in the classroom still educating them and giving them that little extra that they need. Um, I spent some time at the state conference just last week and was able to go with the gal from Decatur that's taking over my classroom which was awesome. We got to talk a little bit, and I found myself using the word grace a lot. So I have decided that's my theme for the year is grace. I'm not sure how I'm going to tie it all in, but to me, that's what these babies need. They need some grace, and they need some love, and I'm here to get it. So thank you guys very much. Yes. All right. Next, I'm going to introduce you to Matt Rhodes, and Coach Rhodes is our new <coughs> graduate high school strength and conditioning coach. Kickback, this is going to be a while. <laughs> uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, Matt Rhodes, I am originally from Massachusetts. <laughs> that snake that's so hard to say. Right? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Went to University of Massachusetts to play lacrosse. I looked a lot different then. Uh, transferred to the University of Arizona. Played football there. Coached football at the University of Richmond for a couple years after I realized that I wasn't going to play in the NFL. Um, got into weightlifting, <clears throat> a lot of bad mistakes doing there, but uh, I've been in college strength and conditioning for the last decade at uh, Yale, University of Albany, in upstate New York, University of Rhode Island, uh, and I recently just left Moorhead State University in Kentucky. So I'm <clears throat> very much looking forward to the high school level, I think. Uh, as fun as the college level is, I, I, I really think that the impact that you can have at the high school level is, is <clears throat> you can teach those kids more, I think you can have more of an impact on them. And that was one of my, uh, my most motivating factors was to, 
I have a good friend in Ohio who does the same thing. And he said it's, he was in college strength and conditioning. He's in high school now. And he's like, it's the best thing we've ever done. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Really thankful to, to have the opportunity. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, Amy Scarfett. Amy is one of our new speech pathologists. Hello. Hey. I'm Amy Scarpa. I too am uh, from New England, so I grew up in New Hampshire. <laughs> I'm first going to continue that theme. Um, but I've been here for about 16 years now. Um, I previously worked in Bentonville. Um, I was at Elm Tree Elementary for six years. Prior to that, I worked in a medical setting at Mercy. Um, and I'm excited to be here and kind of be in a smaller environment and looking forward to getting started. Welcome, Amy. Welcome. Next, we have Sean Sparks, who is a new fifth grade teacher at Rabbit Upper Elementary. Hello, I'm Sean Sparks, and this will be my 34th year of teaching, oh I think. Um, so I started when I was in kindergarten, right? I, guess. <laughs> um, I have taught everywhere from preschool to higher ed, early childhood education classes, and most recently we moved from Oklahoma, the first of June. And I was a Title I reading teacher there, as well as a third, fourth combination classroom teacher. And so I'll be doing fifth grade ELA and social studies, and I'm excited to be here. This reminds me a lot of the school district that my children went to school in, in Kansas. Very small, Oxford, Kansas, and uh, it just feels like home. I don't know why, but, but I just had this pull to this district when I first came. And um, I'm very excited to be here. So thank you for the opportunity. Welcome aboard. Next, we have a returner, Carrie Stamps, who is going to be a career tech teacher at Graduate Middle School. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I began my teaching career here 17 years ago. Uh, I was a career technical education teacher then. For nine years, and I was the elementary principal in the tenth grade years, and uh, so I was tiny back in the classroom. So um, I'm very excited to be back here and um, working so closely with Gravit. You know, I visited and did a lot of stuff with Gravit over the years, so I, I know we're doing some good things here. I'm excited to be a part of the team. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Welcome back. All right, next we have Natalie Williams, and Natalie is going to be our reading specialist at Glenduffy. Williams. Um, I'll be the new reading specialist at Glenn Duffy. Very excited about this opportunity. Um, I know this is a new uh, position, kind of a new endeavor for the district, um, which is very exciting for me. This will be my 27th year as a teacher, um, and I have been a reading specialist for a long time and have always worked with uh, mostly <coughs> first grade. Um, so I feel like I'm just ready to roll in this opportunity and just excited to get plugged in and work with those kids and make them stronger readers and help them love reading. So I um, appreciate again the opportunity and look forward to a great school year. Welcome Thank aboard. You. Next we have Tony Yanez, and Tony is going to be a first grade teacher at Glen Duffy. Hi, I'm Tony Yanez. I'm originally from Parsons, Kansas. Um, while I was there, I got to teach first grade for four years. Um, I also graduated from Pitt State with my master's and bachelor's degree. Uh, a little over a year ago, I moved down here uh, to Pea Ridge, and I got to continue teaching first grade. So I'm glad to get to come here and keep teaching first grade. It's where my heart is, and um, I'm from a small town, so I'm really excited to be back in a school where it has that small hometown feel. So I feel right at home being here. Welcome. Hey, to all of our new staff who introduced yourself tonight, um, Susan. Our uh, newspaper reporter is going to want a picture of you all, so um, she'll probably step out with you in the front lobby to get a group picture. Then if you want to come back in for more of the board meeting, you are welcome to, or you can see Thank you all for being Thank here. So How much. exciting it is. Yes.
agenda. Yes. And you had All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passed. All right, financial report. Yes. Okay. Reviewing the results for the fiscal year. 100% yeah, through the school year. Looking at page one revenues uh, for the current month. For the month of June, $680,937,000. For a grand total of thirteen million two hundred and forty-seven thousand, um, we're close to five hundred and eighty thousand over budget and revenues. A lot of that is due to our collection rate that we use. But as we, as you guys know, that's a common practice using that rate throughout the state. Um, our pre-K tuition and after-school tuition we covered sharply this year after Corona, so we'll be adjusting. Uh, that up this year. Uh, as we look at the state and federal funding, uh, some of these may look a little bit low, but they will have more than likely a carryover with those, or those amounts will be carried over at the end of the year. Uh, one area where we've had uh, to pay some attention to is Fund 6750 Medicaid. Uh, the state has had some issues processing that discussed that before. Uh, the SPED director and her staff have done a good job staying behind that and keeping those revenues coming in. Uh, let's take an example here for ESA from 2281. It's only at 90%. And I talked to the federal coordinator. She's having a lot of carryover funds. If you look at the bottom of the page for the month, close to 700000 in revenue. Um, plus the 23.6 million for the year. Now, if you look at the, the budget column of 25, it looks under budget, but it's primarily due to the ESSER funds. Even though we have, and we've discussed this before, even though we have a multi-year budget for those ESSER funds, they want us to budget that entire allocation in the first year. As we spend that, that will be adjusted going forward so you won't see that full allocation. Any questions on revenues for the year? Moving to page two, uh, expenditures, teacher salary fund came in at 98% with expenses a little over eight and a half million. Uh, operating fund at 105%, we were feeling the inflation there. And that was only for a portion of the year. Uh, obviously it would have been more severe if we'd experienced inflation uh, throughout the entire year. Uh, building fund, we had a lot of capital outlays that we didn't know the budget for earlier in the year, so that's why that came in at 274%. That service fund, pretty close. Uh, federal funds, 55%. A lot of that's primarily due to carryover funds that she'll bring into the subsequent year. Uh, and the cash on hand, a little over $7 million. Of course, that includes the $1.4 million for the turf uh, proceeds. Looking at operating cost centers, uh, everybody was on or below budget, uh, except Mr. Carver with uh, custodial and maintenance grants and transportation, 104% uh, and 109%. Despite that, I think they did a really good job. Okay, yeah. I expected it to be a lot worse with the inflation we were seeing. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, Daniel, we know his costs are up, and that, that moderated as the year went on since his expenses were front-loaded, and we'll pay, be paying a lot more attention to those IT dollars uh, in the near future. Uh, utilities, kind of what we expected, to be honest, is a little shocked at the, at the rise in the price of diesel and fuel. You can see that uh, it was 150% at the budgeted amount. Uh, 
electricity was up. Uh, I'm kind of really worried about that with this heat we're having right now. And the gas was up 123 <coughs> percent. You know, it's going to keep impacting us. And you know, uh, my opinion was that the government didn't raise rates uh, enough. They weren't serious about it. And I think the market reacted. I think that has to do with a lot of the inflation we're seeing. Can you may I add something about the fuel? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, to finish out the year, Mr. Carver had to place um, another whole order. And so he does have enough fuel to get us to probably September. And so part of that 150% over will actually help us get school started as well. And then looking at our, our summary at the very bottom, which is now annual, uh, we strip out any kind of loans, construction activity or ESSER activity that might work this. See that we budgeted about 1.6 million surplus uh, year to date. I mean, we're within $10,000 of that goal. So I've run. Th this model has has worked. I like our conservatism in it. Um, you know, so, so much of our our budget is salary and benefits, close to 80 percent. That that kind of keeps you know your variance analysis a little tighter. So if you see something. That Pretty substantial, uh, but it's worked again. Uh, we'll present that for the building fund transfer that we budgeted one and a half million back in April at next month's meeting. Uh, between now and then, I'll wait on the final net legal balance report from the state. So I've worked with the, the latest one that I have. Uh, I'll explain that more to you guys next month. It's kind of complicated. It's basically funds one, two, and four. You're, you're Balance in those funds do not exceed 20% of your net liquid revenues. Uh, so after we make the transfer, I'm projecting that will leave us at about 13% of net legal revenues, uh, which I, I, I don't know, it's never enough for the business manager, which that was always higher for cash flow, but it'll be a good start for next year. Uh, if you guys look at the statement of changes in fund balances, First sections, you can see I started to make my year and closing entries there. As we pay salaries throughout the year, you'll see a negative balance, okay, in those buckets. Teacher salary, uh, MBCT bonus, ESA, etc. You can see I've moved the cash from the operating fund over there to make those ending balances zero. That's just part of my, my closing entries for that fiscal year. Um, as you look through the through the next section, uh, actually go to page two. When you look at your six series accounts, you'll see that the cash balance in some of these funds is negative. It's because they owe us money, so we'll be booking a receivable for those at year end. Do you have any questions on that? No. Okay. Uh, moving to the balance sheet. Tendency is to try to keep that very clean. You can see that there are a few minor payroll items still out there that payroll is working on. Uh, we have a little over seven million in cash. Uh, Four point one million of that is in our best operating fund. Six hundred fifty-six thousand uh, was in our best money market for the building fund. Eight hundred fifteen thousand at Legacy in the money market, which is tied to the operating fund. Looking at, at the ESSER balances, uh, ESSER 2, fund 6781. Uh, for the 2021-22 fiscal year, we budgeted 544,000. We had spent a little less than 400, so we've got a little cushion there that will push forward to subsequent years. Uh, going to the next page, ARP ESSER, fund 6795. That went a little bit over. Uh, where that was at was in the COVID leave and benefits. Kind of dug down into the code of federal regs and they, they allowed some other benefits that we initially hadn't budgeted for. So it came out a little higher, it was about $150,000. Uh, 
overall, um, I'm not surprised that we made our bill, but I'm not sure what the inflation we would have if Nestor hadn't offset some costs. So there's some concern going into this year how, how severe and how prolonged the inflation would be. Okay, so we got our audit this uh, yes, ma'am. Well, maybe came last week or anything. It looked like it was a good audit. I just, um, there was a few little things. That, yeah, they, yeah. No, they didn't give us a clean opinion, which kind of isn't to my standard. Yeah. But it looked like it was just some little yeah, bookkeeping. Is it bookkeeping error? Yeah, I think there things. were some assets. The AP manager missed yeah. booking okay. the subsidiary schedule. Uh, I made a mistake on the journal entry. Okay. I'm talking to the state. It's not Check that got through. I'm dealt with. Yeah. So I caught that with the cash recon. Okay. Early on. But yeah, overall, it's our August regular board meeting to review that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so and I'll make sure the new board members get a get copy, copy of that. Okay. Yeah. So so overall, overall, not terribly happy yeah. with that. Overall, it was a good audit. No, I think the first point of opinion that we ever got was last year. That was okay. kind of a nice deal. So. Okay. So, Flipping. <laughs> uh, but I got your one and a half million, Mr. Moore. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Thanks, Dennis. All uh, right, superintendent's report. training and I um, for those who don't know our new board members after they're elected they have a state training that is required of all new board members and then we also had a local board member training and I don't know if they learned anything in their trainings or not but I learned a lot um, from preparing for our trainings and going back and reviewing things and one of the things that our new board members called my attention that I'm going to try to do a better job of um, as everybody knows that board meetings are open meetings, all of our business is discussed at open meetings, and because I put some detail into the recommendations that go in the packets for the board members, sometimes when we get to an item, we just do the motion and pass, and it makes it appear to those out on the internet that, oh, they must have talked about that previously, or they must have had some other meeting, which is not accurate, but I give you a detailed description um, within the packet, and so when you get your board packet, you have a week to look over those things, and um, so I'm gonna try and do a better job when we go through the action item, just to highlight a few of the things that are in the packet, um, so the people who are watching <coughs> will also know the same kinds of information that you got. So that was just a good reminder to me of how it looks to people who are on the internet. So um, I don't know if any of our new board members have anything that you would like to share. I can just say that I appreciate the time, you know, and, and the folks that came in to see the passion and like to hear the why. You know, we, I think we know what you do, but why you do it, um, it's pretty important. And to a person, you know, everyone talked about the people that worked with them, and that kind of gives me some passion. And if it doesn't, you probably have a pulse. Um, but appreciate that. Look forward to serve with you. So. Yeah, I would say obviously I'm, I'm a CPA, I'm a CPA, so obviously the finance part, I love that part. I guess I'm sure <laughs> Brad and I really loved it. But you know, to echo what Brad says, when the administrators came in or the the people that we met with, you could really tell there was a theme about our district being different in a good way and then being really proud of that um, and them being really concerned or that's their mission is to make sure that that continues. And so that was pretty cool for it to, to almost to a person to hear that. And, so. and they don't they didn't know what each other were saying. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I, I got to, I was really blessed to be able to go down to Hot Springs and be with uh, uh, new board members from around the state. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to go down there um, and learn that we truly are a blessed community here, blessed district. Uh, the, just not 
only the board, but with our superintendent and our administration, learning from what what other schools have. We truly are blessed. Um, but it, it was good to go down and, and listen to them uh, and, and learn all about policies and, and, and everything that, that, that goes on here so that we can move as I like to use the word one body. And it's 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 gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. I'm interested to see how this is gonna go. Those of us that are old board members, it's exciting to hear the three new board members and already um, learn that we've got an amazing district. And even in that short time they spent together, so and I just want to thank all of our board members for your service um, and for all of the time that you put in. I don't know that people realize how much studying and research and homework you do to prepare for a board meeting. Um, this month alone, I think you had somewhere between 500 and 600 pages worth of data and information to study so that you could make informed decisions on behalf of the students in the district. And, um, and you, all, you all did that. Um, it's, it's not just for show, you really did, because you asked me some really, really great questions about the information in the packet. So um, thank you all for your time, because it's a huge commitment. The next item on our agenda um, is Becky Sears' curriculum <coughs> instruction report. She is not sick, so I'm going to do my best to substitute for her. And so um, on pages 52 to 56, you have Rabbit High School school improvement plan for the year. You have, um, on 57 to 61, you have the middle school school improvement <coughs> plan. Pages 62 to 67, you have upper elementary school improvement plan. And 68 to 73, you have Lynn Duffy School Improvement Plan. And I was going to see if you had any questions. I can tell you that the format for the plan and the headings for the plan um, come to us from the state. And Becky submits all of this <coughs> to a template in a program called In the Star. I can tell you that um, their real life in action improvement plan is much more detailed and extensive. They are thinking every hour of every day what can they do to get better. Everybody starts off with safety. Yep. Yes. Hot topic right now. Absolutely. It should be. Oh. Absolutely. Good point, Matt. Because if we're not safe, then we can't educate. Absolutely. Okay, Becky's next report is the Family and Community Engagement Annual Report. Again, as you can see from the blue um, bar, it says Arkansas in the Star. <coughs> so this is a template within the state's in the Star program that Becky adds some detail to. And again, there will be a lot of different kinds of engagement um, in addition to what is in this plan. Um, but this is what she will submit on behalf of the state for this year, if you have any questions. I have a question real quick. Uh -huh. I think I should have asked this on the last part. Sure. Of the school improvement plan. Sure. <clears throat> Do all of the building's uh, objectives are to, well, that's not true. Hold on. The one I'm looking at right now must be the upper is the focus area implementation. What page? 62. 62. Okay. Implementation of the new art and science of teaching. Is that something that we have used in the past, or can you speak to that for a couple minutes? Sure. <clears throat> So the art and science of teaching is this book that was written by Bob Marzano, and Bob Marzano is an educational
professional researcher that has been around for probably 20 years. And he is best known for high yield instructional strategies. So his research um, started by visiting tens of thousands of classrooms to see what strategies yielded the highest achievement outcomes. And so things like comparing and contrasting. Um, it's been a while since I've been in a classroom. Um, and so but that's what all of his research is on. And so this book um, is just full of different strategies, teaching strategies that teachers can use um, to help their students learn better. And so there are things like um, using informal assessments of the whole class, using formal assessments with individual students, um, chunking content, processing content, using structured practice sessions, examining errors and reasoning, um, generating and defending claims, um, just choosing some random ones, previewing strategies, highlighting critical information, reviewing content, reflecting on learning, assigning purposeful homework, using physical movement, maintaining a lively pace, using academic games, organizing the physical layout of the classroom, um, using verbal and nonverbal behaviors that indicate um, connection with students, um, asking in-depth questions of reluctant learners. So it's just all different kinds of strategies that teachers can use to help improve student learning. And it's not content specific, so a PE teacher could use it as easily as a chemistry teacher, as easily as a third grade teacher. This new the district. Sense. This new the district or that we used? Um no. This book has been being used um, in the district and statewide for probably three years. I would say so. Um, absolutely. And what, what we find if you get comfortable as an educator in the classroom with the strategies that you're comfortable with, and that doesn't always work for all learners, and so bringing it back around to, okay, I want you to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and start using some different strategies. Use what, what you feel comfortable with and what works and you know works, but also be ready because there are going to be learners that don't learn in that in that way. Um, and we are we have some big trainings coming up with with Marzano Associates coming into um, Becky and Nikki and I were able to attend a really intense training in Little Rock. It was a two day training, and I, we just came back on fire and ready to support our teachers in it. And then we gave a survey to our teachers, like, what do you use? What do you currently feel so strong, you know, in your teaching and giving teachers the opportunity to see each other in action? But then, okay, let's get some more strategies up our sleeves. So that's definitely our one of our big goals is to start implementing and making sure we're using whatever it takes for all kids. That's a great question. Thank you for that. I assume the expectation is that this isn't a resource, but it's expected to be used, right? Like I see there's some audit or, you know, we're going to be checking. That's, it, so. yes, that's, well, and, but there is choice in it. Definitely. There are, <clears throat> this book has 43, it teaches 43 different strategies. And so students, uh, teachers will choose four yeah. of the 43 yeah. this year. So there's some choice. Yeah. And then you give us that early out Friday time, and that's part of what, what the teacher The strategies in this book don't have, are, are not associated with standards-based I, I, I kind of glanced through that by going through the, I'm just looking down the road. It's not. 
not going to bring anything else in. Well, he's a, I mean, <laughs> Everybody gets a trophy with him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the trophy is learning, and that's what we want all students to do is ultimately be learners. But we do want them to learn. Yeah. We do. But we haven't been for a few years. Our test scores. We're still waiting on our, our star assessment, right? Or not our star assessment, but ATC Aspire. Yes, we'll have, we have that for the back. office board meeting. Know that um, the state will have those to us by August 1st. And I'll eat crow like a son of that. You can bring it right here and put it in my plate. I'll eat it. But <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm more old school traditional. We've got a building that knocks a home run out every time. And we talk about let's do what they're doing. Have we, are we doing it? Are we like the PLCs or whatever? Have we asked them to train the other teachers? We are doing some of that during our August back to school. Great. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a fan. Yeah. I'm not and, a fan of standard based grade. And um, the, those grade levels that you're referring to happen to have had our lowest test scores on STAR this school year, this spring. The ones that haven't had it? No, um, seventh and eighth had our lowest test scores on STAR this year oh, okay. in the district. Okay. There is in the back of that book because I did ask Maribel to look at mm -hmm. it. Um, and I also asked, and since our picture, there's a great combination of standards and then letter grading that I would like to see implemented. And it looked, I mean, I'm not a teacher. I'm not going to come from a teacher background unless you talk about Sunday school. Um, it looked like it would mean a lot of needs for y'all, but it would also mean a need for those uh, community members and parents that don't, still don't get standards and still don't like it, that maybe this would be a, uh, would bridge the gap for that yeah. portion of it. Yeah. And I'm going to meet with um, Nikki and Mandy and Becky to look at that. And Shannon, um, and the reason Shannon's pulled in, even though the high school doesn't do standards-based grading, is Shannon manages eSchool, which um, creates our report cards. And so I need to make sure that nothing would mess up in the system for students to get two grades, in a sense, um, for each content area and how that would filter to the state if that would cause any confusion. And so um, once everybody's back, of us so look at that. Uh, okay, are we ready for Daniel? Mm -hmm. Okay, Daniel's up on pages 86 to 88 is his technology report and through your budget presentation. So I'll get the bad news over first before everyone leaves tonight. I need to get a headshot of y'all. What is bad news? Yeah. It's not news, so that's great. As long as it's good. Yeah, well, I mean, 50 pounds. Yeah. Good. Just a second. Um, so we'll here. I'll start with our technology report that we have. Um, so just with some of the information that we noticed, one of the big trends that we saw last year is that we did have a 17% increase in our um, repairs for Chromebooks. Uh, parts have only been going up for costs. They've come down a little bit since last year. Availability's been a little bit more easy to get a hold of some of the major parts that we need. Um, why that is, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if that's the removal of insurance that we've had for it, so we've not been able to push insurance out through it. I don't know if that was a deterrent at that point, um, that we had to eat more costs. I'm assuming that's what it was, is that we had the insurance money before that was getting brought in that could be what's escalating some of those costs for it. Uh, but we're going to continue to monitor that this year and try and come up with some other procedures that we can put in place to try and um, deter people from using that device to run the uh, piece of school property. So I don't foresee that being, I would like to see that number go down um, quite a bit. Um, a 10% increase I probably could have seen, but 17 is a lot higher than I wanted. So uh, we're going to meet with my staff. We've had some preliminary discussions about it and see if we can maybe address that issue. 
Uh, shortages are still the biggest thing we're facing right now, depending on what it is, and it's kind of hit and miss with those kinds of things. Uh, we've tried, um, we're waiting right now on an insurance claim for some switches that got hit by weather, and that those, I don't even have an estimated timeline for them, so we're trying to, it might be one or two areas there to be some concern, but we should be ready to go by the time school starts doing a little configuring to make some stuff work the way it needs to. So I don't see that being an issue with it, um, but that's still gonna continue to be a problem. Projectors are our biggest thing. It's not about every school district in Arkansas can't find projectors right now for classrooms, so we might have to look at alternative um, items to make that happen. So. Went into a little bit of the, uh, for our future technology plans. Um, the personal development software we used last year, IT Pro TV, has been really beneficial. Um, we got a new staff member in last Monday, um, and kind of that's been really big. We seem to enjoy it. Our, Current staff continue to use it. We've been building out some plans, so I think that's really going to help these people grow in areas that they really need growth, and also anything they want to pursue later on that could be beneficial to the district. So it'll be good to continue to use that, especially for the cost. I think it's a great deal. Um, one thing the board had requested before was a list of Chromebooks uh, when they're going to be going out. So currently, right here, it's on this report, and it's also on my projected three-year budget. Um, 2022, we're replacing the 500 pages should come in tomorrow, so we'll start getting all those configured ready to push out. I don't see any issues at the start of school as far as not having Chromebooks, not having parts. We will be ready to go when school starts. Our next issue we're gonna run into is, in 2024, we only have about 200 to replace, so that's, we have a year break in between there. Um, 2027 is gonna be a big one. That's gonna be a lot. Um, that number actually went up a little bit. It's on my three-year budget one, it's 1644. Um, what, we're gonna, what we're trying to do, is, since we do have time to plan, I would like to spread that out. Uh, what I don't want to do is spread that out, though, and keep getting models that are going to die in the same year. Um, and so for our new board members, if you haven't heard me of this, um, when they go into black, they don't die, they don't work. They just quit getting updates from Google. And that is not an issue for 99% of the things we do. But 1% of that causes issue is on our testing software for state testing. So if they cannot upgrade to the version of Google the state testing requires, then they can't state test, and that causes issues for us. That's why we try to keep them in compliance. Um, there have been other solutions that come out trying to use to circumvent this. Uh, there's been some some success. I'd like to see the price come down a little bit before I try and start pushing that out across the board. So if that does become an option, that might be something I'll look to the board at a later date, but we've got a couple of years to make that decision. Um, that's something me and Dennis, I think, are going to have to come sit down and talk about. I'd like to future-proof and try and get a model that goes past that, so we can maybe break that up and not eat that big of an amount in one year, so it will be pretty substantial, even if we do piece it. How long does it take to onboard 1,500? No. It would take me less time to write a piece of programming to do it. I'd say probably a, a week with it. Um, if it happens in the summertime, a couple interns, no major catastrophes across the board, we can get it done in a week. Unboxing them takes longer than it does setting everything up. So, any other questions? That we, have? we expect those to be done in probably two days. And I'll be <coughs> short an intern on each day. They'd be each have to look support me. So. They scheduled those, I promise you they know those are coming um, Any questions on the technology report? Your second point here. Yep. When you say the state provides internet connection. Yep. You, you almost kind of link to believe like something shaky might happen. No, um, we have talked in the past about maybe having a backup line for it. Um, we have a strong enough connection to support that. Uh, when I was the technology director at Wonderview, the state provided line was only three key one lines. So what was good? 15 years ago was all we had for 500 people. I couldn't let the kids get on YouTube. We have about a 10 gig line here. So we have plenty of speed for it. Um, so I don't feel the need for us to have a secondary backup line. We're just trying to improve speed. I think we'll be good there. Um, at the end of that report, and actually bringing that up, the one thing that we will be looking at maybe for future years, I would like to do uh, change how this entire district is configured from a fiber standpoint. That's gonna be an E-Ray project that I'll come with y'all when I have a proposal and some more. Information. Right now, everything runs to the middle school. So if the middle school goes down for whatever reason, it shuts down all the buildings. Um, I'd rather move it back to the career center at that point. Um, if the career center goes down, we all go down anyway, because that's where our internet comes through. So I'd rather put that one point of failure instead of two. Um, like I said, that's a next summer at the earliest thing, and I'll definitely have some stuff months in advance to try and get some guidance on that. Uh, so over to the budget. Uh, so what I did is I broke down what we had. Um, using only funds 2580, which is the technology budget, I didn't include ESSER, um, didn't include student growth. We like to, 
as it was used primarily for bigger stuff we had during the COVID years, this is new growth we'd like to try and maintain for one-off expensive purchases. If we need to do uh, IP speakers, when we get up there middle school, if we need to do something like that, that's what I'd like to use student growth for, as well as the Chromebook purchases. We need to put these in. Um, as you'll see below that, our yearly software costs uh, are almost about $100,000. Um, so that's a pretty substantial portion of that. And that runs everything from our phone system to our online content filtration to our Chromebook management software, which lets us make sure they're looking at what they're supposed to, and also um, the tracking and reporting that we get from that. Um, Chromebook repairs, averaging, we put about 15000 a year for it. Um, that's included in that sometimes is the option to replace an entire Chromebook. That doesn't happen very often, but it's happened a few times in there, but that's not really affecting that number very much. What I did is I took the three years that we had from the last year and did a three-year maintenance for what our just maintenance costs are. That can be anything from parts, cables, um, just all the stuff that we need here throughout the year to make stuff happen. Um, it was a little higher during COVID time, but it's also been a little higher last year too, just due to the fact of how expensive stuff was last year. So it has come down a little bit. I expect our number this year to go down. And then I broke it into what we looked at for our projected for this summer, what we were looking at buying for our timeline refresh, and then what we're looking at for the next three years as well. And that's what we have currently, that's with no new projects put into place, that's just what needs to be replaced in its five-year rotation mark. So do we have any questions on that? Thank you, Daniel. month we were reviewing, reviewing the discipline report for the year and board had a great question about bus discipline and what that looks like broken down so on page 89 you can see how the bus discipline report is broken down and this was taken from um, the bus drivers write-ups is where these numbers came from so you can see the grand total on the far right column for each one of the buildings and then it's broken down into the different kinds of things students were written up for. And on the next two pages, is the update of our employment changes for this year. And I still get questions about how does this compare to other years? And right now, we um, still have fewer employment changes this year than last year. Um, the significant difference is in classified. Last year, we had 22 different classified um, staff changes, and this year, as of right now, we only have 10. And so that um, is one of the biggest differences. Um, so in all, we right now, out of all of the changes, we have five more staff changes than last year. However, last year we added 11 and a half new positions, and this year we've added 20 new positions. And so we have nine more positions this year, but we've only replaced five more. So um, it's right about the same as last year, but um, significantly less turnover in classified this year at this time. Okay. Right. Are you ready for action items? Action items. Do you want to go into executive session we'll move first? To, it's been um, policy or preference that we move into an executive session before there's a new hire and things of that nature to discuss personnel. So. Uh, seven board members will move into, uh, we're going into executive session for the purpose of discussing employment. All right, seven, or yeah, 6.55.
Yeah. All right, seven board members met in executive session for the purpose of discussing the following items pursuant to the Arkansas Freedom of Information Act 93 as amended employment. No other items were discussed and no votes were taken on any item. All right. The first item is um, the approval of the board meeting and work session calendar for the 22-23 school year. All right. Any discussion? Is there a motion? No, there's not. Mm -hmm. I'm move we accept the school board meeting calendar as is. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion well, we, passed. We need to win on that. Oh, we need that wasn't there. Don't we? Well, no, not necessarily, do we? It's a quorum. You don't have to, but well, yeah, it would be no, nice. It's yeah, it's disrespectful, but I didn't realize. Thank you for pointing it out that he wasn't in here, but. That one down, can we redo it. that, right? Lacey, can't we just redo that? What? I was just asking my friend Lacey if we could redo that. I have it recorded on YouTube. <laughs> it's being recorded. Right. All right. <laughs> Matt, we had moved on to the school morning meeting and we had voted. Uh, do you want us to revote and include you? Are you okay with the school board meeting calendar? Move on. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Matt. All right. The next agenda item has to do with the board governance and operations policies. These are all of the policies that start with the number one. I had no recommendations for changes to board policies 1.2, 1.3x, 1.6, 1.61, 1.7x, 1.8, 1.8a, 1.8b, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12x, 1.13a, 1.14, 1.14a, 1.15, 1.17, and 1.19. Um, they were in there because it's always good for us to go back and review from time to time. It had been a long time since we had reviewed those. So if any board members do have recommendations for updates to any of those policies, um, this will be the perfect time for a motion. If not, we can look at the next ones. I was a little concerned about one point. I'm joking. <laughs> So policies that I did have some suggestions for, policy 1.1x, legal status of the board of directors on page four. I move that we approve the update suggested for policy 1.x. And that's on page four of your policy book. The first page four um, in your policy book. I move that we approve the update suggested for policy 1.1x. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. And for those who are listening, um, that change in that policy was to change the school board election from September to May. Um, we had done it in practice, but we had not done it in policy. The next recommendation is for policy 1.5, which is duties of the secretary. We actually um, had duties of the secretary listed twice in our policy book. So my recommendation is to delete the standalone policy, which is 1.5 and just utilize 1.3x. However, if there are things from 1.5 that you want included in the 1.3x, you can let us know and we'll move those over. And that's on page nine of your book. I'm fine with it. 
either way, I just wanted to call attention that there were differences if somebody cared. You want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I move that we delete policy 1.5 from the school board policy manual since this information is already covered in policy 1.3x. Ten seconds. So was this, did you see some stuff in there that you think we should add? No, I mean, it's just, it's pretty, the 1.15, it has more bullet points or numbers to it, where like on the 1.13, you just have the 1, 2, 3, 4, I can't even remember now what was different. It says, uh, Responsible for board, calling board. special meetings of the board, is that important? No, I don't know, and I'll, in my years, the secretary's done that. Yeah. The right. calling of special meetings? Yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. Anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about uh, <clears throat> in charge of the meeting is the vice president and VP are gone? That's just Robert's rule of order. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next recommendation is similar. It's found on page 29 and it's policy 1.16, which outlines the duties of the dispersing officer, which is also included in 1.3x. And so that was another redundant one. And the same on that. There's some differences in 1.16 and what is for the dispersing officer. And I don't care. I'm just pointing out. So I'm going to go ahead and make the motion to move that we delete policy 1.16 from the school board policy manual since this information is already covered in policy 1.3x. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Policy 1.18 has a footnote at the bottom, and footnotes are not language that's intended to be incorporated into the policies, and so we need to have that deleted. Move that we delete the footnotes from Policy 1.18 as that language was not intended to be incorporated into the policies. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Policy 1.21 on pages 34 and 35 also had the footnotes included, and so my recommendation is that we have those deleted since that language is not intended to be incorporated into the policies. I move that we delete the footnotes from policy 1.21 as that language is not intended to be incorporated into the policies. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item, um, action item, is policy 4.7, which is absences that are on pages 36 to 41. And I had a question for a board member, from a board member, in the policy that was posted on the website this year, um, that policy started with the statement about IP and 504 plan requirements um, as a precedence and in the new policy it's moved to the back of the policy under an attendance waiver and so um, that that wasn't the that wasn't necessarily the reason for the change the reason for the change in policy 4.7 from what was posted last year to what is recommended for this year. What is recommended for this year is what our local board established um, as the definitions and the consequences for attendance. Um, prior to me being here, the board really wanted to address attendance issues and make the consequences for attendance um, much more detailed and stricter. And so the board um, work together to craft a local policy that put those things into place and then um, at some point in time after that when the state 
sent us model policies to update our policies. We approved the model policy update for 4.7 and when we did that, we inadvertently deleted all of the work that the local um, board and administrators had put into the local policy. And so what happened was this year, um, our administrators were holding students accountable to that attendance and using those consequences. However, if a parent or a student questioned those consequences, the official policy that was in place didn't back the administrator. And so that's the reason for going back to our locally crafted policy so that all of those protections are in place. It doesn't mean that we can't make adjustments, but that was the reasoning behind the change. And there was also a question about um, the removal of definitions for excused absences and um, new wording for school activities and um, so there, there's a piece in there that if there is a question about any of the activities that there's an attendance committee that looks at that and determines um, whether or not it was excused or not excused. But again, we can go back. If you like the excused absence wording in the state model policy better, we, we can make that switch. Um, so, and there is not any conflict. And there's also a question about um, the athletic handbook references excused absences as outlined in 4.7, and there's not conflict there because whatever our district board policy is, so whatever's in 4.7, will always trump the athletic handbook because the official policy and consequence and what we go by is the school board policy. So I don't know if I answered questions that board members had. You may have other questions. The only, only questions or concerns I have is, <clears throat> put, are we putting, um, I don't know if the right word is, but by taking out those specific excuse absences. So some, one of it was like participation with FFA 4-H sanctioned activity. Are we making it too broad by just saying school approved activity? And I know I'm specifically tied to that one. I know it's actually an issue our kids miss a lot because of that. Mm -hmm. And if we have kids that miss a lot, and also have other issues that maybe are struggling, are they gonna be able to point back to the vagueness in the policy to say, you know, whether or not it was approved or not, or the administrator? Um, and there was specific wording around death in, the, death in the family, bereavement type of things that aren't in the new policy as well. Um, so on page 42, you like the specificity of those 11 those 11 different kinds of excused absences? I, I think it would take some of the onus off the administrator to have to decide what is excused and what isn't by having some specific examples, yes, I like that. So if the board wants to have that part, um, that excused absence part added to the local policy, we can do that. Entertain the motion. I wouldn't know how to do that, so somebody else will have to. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just being honest. I'll make a motion to approve the 11. So, yeah, okay, I'll make a motion to approve the, the 11 excused absence stated in the previous policy to the new policy. There you go. Mm -hmm. Second. There we go. Discussion. So we've got a clear understanding of that. So what I, um, what I have wordsmithed is, I move that we replace the current school board policy 4.7 with the updated version of the same policy plus the 11 excused absence descriptions as is outlined in pages 36 to 41 of the June-July 2022 proposed policy update packet. Yep. Awesome. Basically the same thing I said. Yes. It's 100%. Just in a yeah. <laughs> yes. What she said. What she said. Yeah. Yes. All right. 
So we've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next um, policy we're looking at is policy 5.7, which is um, selection of library media center materials, pages 44 to 46. And there's some things highlighted that it's been recommended that we add to the current policy. And that's um, in selection criteria that um, any books or videos in our library be free of <coughs> pornographic content, which is on page 44. And page 45 defines um, who can make challenges. So adding, um, before it just said parent of a student, now um, legal guardian, person having lawful control of a student, person standing in loco parentis has been added. And it also, um, there's a piece that's been added that um, prior to an official meeting, the principal library media specialist could review a specific item and remove it from circulation without um, a full challenge. And then um, if they do not, and it moves to a full challenge, there are more details that are just put in for that part of the challenge. So it just makes it a little bit stronger as a result of some of the conversations and concerns that were brought to the board this spring. I move that we replace the current school, bar, school board policy 5.7 with the updated version of the same policy that is outlined in pages 44 through 46 of the June, July 22 proposed policy updates packet. Any further discussion? Yeah, I got a question. <clears throat> that principal and library media specialist agree that the specific item fails to meet the criteria. That's only if an item is challenged, or they just go through pulling out whatever they want. Um, this so refers to the challenge because it's under challenges. However, our library media specialists um, are supposed to review their collection annually. And so at any time, if something doesn't meet the criteria, they can pull it out. They don't have to wait for a challenge. They can do that at any time. And is, wasn't there going to be a form somewhere where parents could opt their, you know, like, Yes, don't. the reason it's not, in, yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Yes, That's as part of their um, the back to school yes. information for okay. librarians. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item are the updates of the model policies from the Arkansas. Um, school Board Association, and um, you can see we pulled out one policy, so my recommendation says with the exception of policy 3.1, because there were some local things in that policy that we wanted to preserve, so we don't have to come back in the future and fix our mistakes like we did with 4.7. Well, I was going to say, that whole thing about all them 1-1s one and 5s yes. and all that, it's because of this right here. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. It's because it's the school board uh, association changes the wording or whatever, and then it gets passed over. So, I mean, I want, the main thing I want to say that is so people that are watching are like, what are they trying to, trying to change the policies on everybody? But that isn't the case. Yes. I move that we approve the following Arkansas School Board Association policy updates for policies that are outlined in pages 48 through 4101 of the June-July 22 proposed policy updates packet with the exception of policy 3.1. Do I have to read all those others? Okay. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. And I'll just add too for anybody who's listening, because the policies um, are binding in how we how we govern our school district, anytime there's any little change, the policy has to be updated. And so um, 
an example of something that came from the state was there was a policy that talked about Apple, which used to be the name of a non-traditional licensure pathway for teachers. Well, the state has renamed Apple RPEP. And so everywhere in policy that Apple was referred to, now we have to change the name to RPEP. And so um, all of these that were part of this didn't change the way we do business. They were cleanups. The next, um, the next motion does have to do with policy 3.1. And policy 3.1 is the licensed personnel salary schedule. And there were some things in our local policy that were not included in the new state model policy. And so we have, um, we've combined those two so that our verbiage, our local verbiage is still there. I move that we approve the attached update for school board policy 3.1 licensed personnel salary schedule which incorporates both the suggested updates from the ASBA and the verbiage of the current local policy version. Second. All right. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is seeking approval for the 22-23 grocery bids. And that, I'm sorry, that's on page 99 of your agenda. I move that we award Springfield Grocer as our groceries and paper goods provider for the 22-23 school year. Second. All right. Any discussion? Well, we, we obviously don't have the bids in here, but I assume somebody else has looked at us. Yes. Who was last year? Same. Same. Okay. Any other discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is seek approval of Act 1120. 5% pay increases for the 21-22 school year. Any time an employee has more than a 5% raise in a school year, the board has to approve and resolve that spreadsheet. And so you have a spreadsheet attached. And um, people, um, some common reasons why somebody may have exceeded the 5% would be um, additional stipends, summer school pay, bonus pay. Um, some of our bus drivers who do a lot of extra field trips or athletic trips, that will um, increase their salary. And so there is not a motion, but the last um, sentence that says, therefore, can be turned into motion. <coughs> And that's on page 100. Make a motion that the Gravit School District Board of Directors approves and resolves. The spreadsheet, including those explanations, are factual representation of the given of the given for the 21-22 school year. Okay. Right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is seek approval of the 22-23 district and school handbooks. And the motion is on page 103 and you have an entire book of the district and school handbooks. And just so you all know, the state gives us a list of exactly what has to be in the district handbook so there's no way to make it shorter or more readable, um, but that then the district handbooks are a little bit more friendly. But I move that we approve the proposed district school and athletic handbooks for the 2022-23 school year, making certain to include the most recently approved school board policy updates. I do agree with that. I want to make sure anything that was approved tonight, we made swaps. 
Is there a second? Second. And thank you. This is easier to read than last year, or in years past, we had like three different, yeah. four different handbooks. So thank you. Any other discussion? All Our those elementaries made it even easier by combining them. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Okay, the next item is um, to adopt um, the district operational goals for the 22-23 school year, and those are um, on pages 104 to 109. I move that we approve the proposed Gravit School District goals for the 22-23 school year. Second. Right. Any discussion or questions? These pillars haven't changed from years past. No. They're just being more. Yes. What I have found is, and, and we can we can play it right now. Like we can ask everybody, close your eyes. Can you repeat the mission statement that's on the back wall? And nobody can. And we say, close your eyes. Can anybody tell us what the what pillars? You know. We base you know, our decision making our, and, and nobody could. And so our goal is to, bring, to align the pillars with the goals, with the mission statement, so that it's easier for people to know who are we and what's important to us. Yeah. And like Matt said, we're starting with safety, just like the improvement plans, because safety is on everybody's mind. Um, safety is the, the first pillar in the first goal because we want to make sure our students are safe. And I'll also add um, these, when we looked at goals for each one of the pillars, we were looking at what could potentially have the biggest impact, um, the fastest in this area. But obviously there are lots of other things that we are looking at. Um, all the things that we're doing for discipline is part of safety and part of student achievement. Um, our vaping task force, where we're really trying to address the vaping problem. To me, that goes to safety as well. So there are lots of things that we'll be doing and talking about associated with each one of the pillars. Um, these goals, we felt like, were things that would be really easy for people to remember and to do and for us to hold ourselves accountable to. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion. Yeah. One, two. Okay. I, I, I want to know a little bit more about this book before I give anything on it. Okay. Uh, right. So, did you get the reflection, Lacey, Tracy, and Matt? All right, motion passed, 5-2. Yep. And we can get all of the board members mm -hmm. a copy of the book. Yep. Okay, the next item is seek approval for the old ALE building construction project. And you have information about this on pages 110 to 115. I move that we accept the bid of 70, 742000 made by Jackson Bird of OneCon and approved Jackson Bird OneCon as the general contractor for this project utilizing previously approved APR SR funds contingent upon OneCon's ability to secure the appropriate bonding capacity. And the re... Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Now Sorry. discussion. Yeah. Um, the reason that last part is in there about um, contingent upon one con's ability to secure the appropriate bonding capacity is um, one of the partners of one con has passed away recently, and so that um, changes. It has. It's just put a little bit of a wrinkle in that, and so um, once this is approved. If it's approved, um, it'll give them more leverage to go back and do that. But um, obviously, if they were not able to secure the appropriate bonding capacity, um, regardless of how the board votes, it wouldn't go forward. So, so that's, that's, oh, go ahead, yeah, 
I was just looking through the cross linen at the bottom where it's highlighted in yellow. It says uh, third design fee is not included. So when I'm looking at one con, I don't see a design fee. Do we know what that is, and is it figured into this seven hundred and forty-two thousand? I don't think the claims numbers are in that yet. Correct. And so correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but um, the design fee Clay with Build Architects did the design prior to it originally being bid out by Crossland. And um, so we have already been billed for and paid that separately because they had already done the design. Okay, so work. there's not going to be another. No. Okay. There was some uh, allocated on that spreadsheet, right? Correct. The 800 on that spreadsheet. Question, what do we do, what's the building gonna do after, once we get it done? So, in order to qualify for the funds, it has to be used as an instructional space. So it can be used as an instructional space between eight and three, but then it would be available after school um, for other kinds of things. Um, it would be a larger space for us to hold board meetings. If we wanted to have board meetings in there, it would give us more capacity. So um, instructional space could be a place for tutoring, could be a place for workshops. Um, the ALE could move back in there and free up a classroom in the Career Center, or we could expand um, one of the Career Center's programs. Um, but it would, it would be primarily for um, instruction. There are also two offices um, in there, and so we would like to move um, Kelly's office from the Career Center into that building, which would free up a classroom in the Career Center. So, okay. but the, we're, um, we talked about the furniture being mobile so that um, if we wanted to use it for different purposes, it would be easy. Other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is on page 116, and that's seeking approval for um, to replace the flooring in Upper Elementary's restroom. May we approve to replacing the Upper Elementary student bathroom floors with more Mona? Cremona. Thank you. TG poured flooring. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. On pages 117 is the motion. On page 118 is the chart. And we are seeking approval for our 21st Century Community Learning Center after school program pay rates for the 22-23 school year. Um, a board member had some questions about the rates. We have a budget of $75,000 for that program this year, so we have to make sure that our um, all of our pay is within falls within that $75,000. Um, last year, certified teachers who worked in the program um, were paid 30 an hour and were able to up that to 35. Classified staff who have been working in that program were um, last year made $15 an hour, and we would like to raise that to 30 an hour. And the site coordinator last year was making 30 an hour, and we want to increase that to 40 an hour. And so um, once the board has a pay rate schedule that you all have approved, then we send it to the state for their approval. I move that we approve the proposed pay rate schedule for all 21st Century CCLC grant employees. My question is, so will the overtime, oh sorry, 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 is will the overtime that will happen with these, yes, will be paid out of the 21st Century yes. grant, correct? So um, we have not brought any recommendations to the board yet. But we do have, um, as an example, two classified employees who work in our buildings during the day who um, have applied for and are very interested in being the site coordinators, one at the middle school and one at elementary. And so it, 
um, working in the after school program would put them into an overtime situation. And Lacey, um, who's our new um, program director, has talked to 21C um, at the state level, and we can use 21C to pay their overtime. So they would get time and a half, and we can use that in anything that exceeds the state budget, we would be allowed to use um, district operating funds for that overtime. So yes, it could um, cost someone to go over 40, um, 40 hours in a week, and we've gotten permission for that. Other questions or discussion? So the site coordinators, You said that was from 30 to 40. Versus yes, 40. yes. And that's mostly going to be overtime, or do we have a breakdown of that? Um, the, two, um, the two leading candidates currently work 37 and a half hours a week, and this um, position would be 10 hours, and so they would have about seven and a half hours of overtime every week. Do you know how close, like the forecast is to meeting the seventy-five thousand and they said what the budget is? Like how close will be there without overtime, and how much will have to dip into operating to cover the overtime? I do not know off the top of my head. So if we want to back it up to compensate for that, we absolutely can. I mean, it's just a thought, I mean, that because it, it's deceiving to say that the site coordinators are making 40 if they're, that's all, that's all. Yeah. We could. Especially if you're going to, up 30%, you're yeah. going to go up 30% in a year and then. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, if the board wants to, we can back it up to where it was last year at the 30 or more. One second. Vote on this one and then do another okay. motion. We can. All right. All right. All those in favor. What's, uh, what does the thing say below? It says hourly pay ranges. Oh, you can't have a range. You can't have a range. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So we'll bring it to a vote and go from there. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed say. What, what, what are we we're not. We have to vote on the motion that's in vote front of us. Yeah. 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 Those uh, in favor say aye. Those opposed say aye. 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 So motion failed. Yeah. Well, I just I made a motion that this table still can we table it till next meeting? We cannot. We cannot. Because it has to be at the state before our next meeting for their approval. And so what would the out, what would they be again? Tell me. Oh, last year's pay rate? Yeah. And the last year's pay rate for um, site coordinators was 30. 30. And certified teacher was? 30. 30. Certified teacher no, it would have been. was 30. So the site coordinator and the certified teacher made the same amount? Yeah. Last year they did. Okay, classified just checking. Staff was 15. Yes. And classified staff was 15. And classified was 15. And we've added the high school student. That's never. We've never, we've never um, had um, high school students working as part of the program, but it's allowable. So we put it in the pay rate um, in case we want to do that. It would, it would be approved and it would be there. I know I asked about overtime earlier. Do we know it at the rates that we just voted against where that would take us as a total dollar? Like how close to that seventy-five? Because I think the idea would be to squeeze as, as much of that as yeah. we could, you know, without. I do not know. And the, the other challenge to it is, is the overtime is a possibility based on who has applied for the positions. But like the classified staff, we could have someone apply to work at like a mom or a dad or a college student that would fall under classified staff that wouldn't get overtime because theoretically the after school program could be their only job. 
but your site coordinator and your certified teacher would be yes the certified well wouldn't have to be i mean a teacher from decatur could want to come over and do it or but certified don't get overtime anyway gotcha. so that i mean that's out of the question and the only reason our site coordinators would get overtime is because currently our only applicants and our best applicants um, are current classified employees in the district so i could tell you that it is very highly likely that the classified staff and site coordinators will be our current classified staff and not people from the outside um, but i can't guarantee it okay so but this is additional pay off their contract to cut, correct 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 so how is it that we have to pay an overtime if it's two separate it, it depends on the classification under FLSA and the Fair Labor Standard Act as to whether they're exempt or not. So typically those classified employees are making less than the, the exemption amount. A lot of people think a uh, misconception is that, well, if I'm hourly, I'm not exempt. That's, that's not the case. If you go look at FLSA, they, they do an annual salary and I think they break it up into to a weekly pay amount. So the, the issue there is they're not exempt. They're also not making management decisions to some of the criteria that the autonomy may have over that. Um, so we have to pay them overtime, one great overtime under FLSA. Because the way I look at it, they're contracted for 200 days or whatever. This is additional. I don't see how in the world it qualifies as overtime pay because they don't have to do it. It's not part of their contract. Right, well. It doesn't matter. It's a totally different transaction. I, I mean, I, I deal with this at work too. I've got guys that are salary and then they get piece rent too. And it's separate from each other. I'm just saying, I'll see. I, I, does that make sense? We've been advised that if we were challenged, we would By lose. Who? ASBA? The employee want overtime. Yeah. Uh, the people wanting overtime. Yeah. I would, if, if they're the ones that are saying it, then I would not. I'm just telling you. Anyway, that's my opinion. Yeah. I'm one I, I know there are other districts that won't even allow their classified employees to work in their after school program <coughs> because they they have a policy against overtime and it pushes their people into overtime. Can you tell me again the classified certified site last year? Yes. So last year certified made 30 an hour and those are teachers like first grade teachers sixth grade teachers that want to work after school they made 30 an hour last year last year classified staff made 15 an hour and those um, are like special education aides um, title one aides typically um, and the site coordinator last year made 30 an hour So it was a little skewed last year, and we're trying to make up for that, maybe? Or... And down. Every time. But we got to approve something before August. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to leave money on the table. So, but it's hard to kind of guesstimate you know, a number here to understand where we would be with overtime. It'd be nice if we knew, based on the new rate recommendations, where that would lie. Um, but, we have a special meeting on we have a August, special meeting August, August 1st. 1st. We just wouldn't we do it at that meeting where we run into 
problem is um, if the board approves it August 1st and then we get it to the state August 2nd, whether or not we can get program approval in time to start the after school program when school starts. Right. Um, because we wouldn't be able to hire the workers until August 15th. After school, so that's what I was thinking. So, if you if y'all would rather wait until we can get that exact budgeted amount, so you see numbers, um, I think that's a reasonable request. You think we'll be okay? I think so. And if I have to do it at nine o'clock mm -hmm. on the first, I will. <laughs> okay. First order of business on the first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Take away until. Do we Thank need a you. motion to, I don't know. Do we have I'm a motion before right now? We've already voted it down, okay. so voted down so we can move on okay. to just tabling it. Make a circle so we can work on that. What's the program director's assigned rate of pay? I'm sorry, say that again. The program director. Yes. Rate of pay assigned. Yes. Yes. Okay. The next item is to seek approval for a bus route specialist position. And the motion is on page 119 and the description of the request is on page 120. Mr. Carver can probably do a much better job of explaining this, um, but I, I can take my, my son had a great question when he looked over the packet and he said, you need somebody to draw bus routes? Why don't you just use the bus route you have right now? And so the way I explained it to him was, no, we have bus route software that when new students move in, somebody has to input their names and addresses in the software so the driver will know to stop there. And when somebody moves, somebody has to take those names and addresses out so the driver doesn't stop there anymore. And so there's way more to it than that. But, um, Melissa and Richard have a hard time staying on top of it and keeping the information up to date. In addition to that, there are a lot of things, um, I don't know what I'm looking for, but there are other things the software does that would be helpful to our drivers and our transportation department that we have never been able to take advantage of um, just because of the time it takes to input some of that data and information. Now you may want to clean up what I just said. <laughs> you said it pretty well. Basically, it's a daily entry position, so we're trying to do somebody's taking on it to make it better for us. I dabble in a lot of things, and I, I think I do pretty good at it, but this person also, it's not a full-time position, we're just doing it part-time, but then they will keep the, keep the system up to date, take the ones out. We do a, a weekly import from our software from the school and try to update, keep that updated. And then we also use Remind to put out, push out stuff to parents. So we're thinking this person can keep all this updated and be able to push it out. So if we need all the parents on bus 44 to get a Remind message, we have, we, you know, we're certain at all times that we have, you know, the information to be able to push that out to those parents, that people aren't being left out or getting messages that don't apply to them. So I move that we approve. Posting and opening for a route specialist at an hourly rate of $15 for 800 hours, not to exceed a total of $12,000. This position will be paid for using general operating funds. Second. Any discussion, questions? Richard, do you, really, do you think it's going to take that long to figure the software out? And then once it gets figured out? Training the person. That's why we said we put an hourly limit on it. We think it will get this first. I still learn new things from it, and I've had it two or three years. But we're going to, I think it'll get faster once we get it resolved. Because the route changes, I found that the drivers give them in the students, and then they update it. I, I don't think it'll be that long a year or two if we use it year two. But really, this is just a part time position as a sub position. I don't see it being a permanent thing this first year. And if it works, then if it works like I think it will, it'll be better for the next year. 
Have you already got maybe somebody in mind? I do. Okay. All right. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item on page 121 is seek approval to hire a custodian. I uh, move we employ Sherry Lowry as an evening custodian for the Gravit School District on a step nine for an annual rate of 27704. Second. All right. Any uh, questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item on page 122 is a seek approval for a voluntary transfer of Jennifer Mormon to Gravit High School one year only registrar and I left um, the page that Ms. Mormon had signed saying that, yes, it was a voluntary transfer out of your package, and so that was one of your handouts tonight. So you can see that she did say that was something she was pursuing. I move that we approve the voluntary transfer of Jennifer Mormon from a building secretary continuing contract at Gravit Middle School to the Gravit High School one year only registrar position beginning with the 22-23 school year. Second. I abstain. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passed. The next item on page 123 is seek approval for involuntary transfer of Molly Schreiber to Gravit Middle School secretary. And again, it's involuntary because I approached her about the move. I move that we approve the involuntary transfer of Molly Schreiber to the Gravit Middle School Building Secretary position beginning the 2022-2023 school year. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is on page 124 and it's the involuntary transfer of Drew Pasley, the head junior high basketball coach which is the position, the coaching position that Jeff Melton had, and it's involuntary because um, Coach Mitchell and Coach Bush approached Coach Pasley about that. I move that we approve the involuntary transfer of Drew Pasley to the Gravit High School Head Junior High Basketball Coach, Assistant Senior High Basketball Coach position beginning the 2022-2023 school year. The additional leadership responsibilities of Head Junior High Basketball Coach come with a 0 0.075 index stipend of $3,262.50. Any questions, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is um, seeking approval to hire a special education clerk, and the information is on pages 125 to 134 in your packet. I move that we approve Camille Adcock as Special Education Clerk for the Gravit School District on Step 4 of the Building Secretary Salary Schedule at a rate of 21467 Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. <clears throat> Next item. On your agenda is seek approval for Gravit High School Social Studies Assistant Football Assistant Baseball Coach, and the information is found on pages 135 to 150 in your packet. I move that we approve hiring Kyle McCowan as a High School Social Studies Assistant Basketball and High School Football Coach for the 22-23 school year on Step 1 of the Bachelor's Degree Salary Schedule initial stipends and an extended contract for serving as assistant coach for baseball and senior football. His total compensation package will be $50,414.21. Well, 50, right? Say that again, what did you say? Yes. Baseball. Baseball. You said it basketball when you originally said it. Oh, sorry. Think it think it it <laughs> It does say baseball, I just can't read. Yeah. And I'm a little bit dyslexic every now and then, so. <laughs> Any discussion? Sure, that's what you do. Tracy, <laughs> make me hit you in front of all these people. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item um, is seeking approval to hire a Gravit High School math teacher 
and the information is on pages 151 to 166 in your packet. Hi, I move that we approve Leah Laramore as a math teacher for Gravit High School with a bachelor's degree plus 15 credit hours on the step seven of the certified teacher salary schedule for a rate of 47,685. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. The next item on the agenda is seeking approval to hire Gravit Upper Elementary Building Secretary, and that information can be found on pages 167 to 180 in your packet. I move that we approve hiring Megan Mayo as Building Secretary for Gravit Upper Elementary School for the 22-23 school year on step seven of the Building Secretary salary schedule for a total sal salary of 22840 Second. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Okay, the next item is um, consideration of board to board transfer request. We have um, two transfer requests and eighth grade, the first one is an eighth grade student who is requesting a board to board transfer from Gravit to Salem Springs. We move that we approve the board to board transfer of one petitioning student to the Salem, Salem Springs School District. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is um, a third grade student and a fifth grade student who are requesting a board to board transfer from the Gentry School District to the Gravit School District. I move that we approve the board to board transfer of two petitioning students to the Gravit School District. Second. Any discussion? I have uh, I I I got it. Yes. Who wants to go first? Mine was an administrative question. If we were, I don't have any reason to, if we were to say that to not approve the transfer, what happens? that point for the students. They don't come. They have to stay at Gentry or they can petition a different district. What about the one same for the so we have to allow the students out is the first step, right? We do not have to allow students out. Um, but if we don't there has to be an extenuating circumstance um, but I mean, they, do we have to allow the transfer out before they're transferred into the other, like Siloam? Yes, Siloam cannot accept them until sure. we release them. And so, like for this third grader and fifth grader, um, they can't come to us until the Gentry School Board releases them. And that's um, and that's for a board to board transfer. Um, for school choice. It's different. School choice, you have to file for school choice by May 1st, and we vote on school choice at the May board meeting. Um, districts do not have to release students for school choice, but anybody that doesn't meet that May 1 deadline then um, has to go through the board to board transfer. And if a board um, does not allow the going out and the family appeals a board would just have to have a really good reason um, for not allowing it or we'd be told to allow it on allowing the students to come in the state does have a cap if you're within 10 percent enrollment of having to hire another teacher if you approve it then that is an allowable reason to say no, or not just another teacher, it could be another employee. Can you tell us in here if that was the case? Yeah, um, <clears throat> yes, so that's what I'm about to tell you, is that um, in third grade, based on our current numbers, we are within 10%, so we can deny the third grade. Um, you know your total enrollment? I don't at this point. Is your total enrollment over 450? Yes. So, um, and so the reason I asked her that was anything over 450, we're also in the 10% range for having to hire an assistant principal for the building. And so that would be the third grader and the fifth grader. Um, and so this is one of the discussion items that we will bring up August 1st um, as a part of our hiring meeting because it affects hiring. Um, school offices across 
America have for the most part been closed since the end of May. And so until they start opening back up August 1st, we don't have a true picture of who has moved in and who our new enrollees are and who have left because there have been nobody at other schools to request um, records. And so right now, all we have to go by are the numbers like they were on the last day of school, promote everybody up a grade, and then the enrollment packets that we know have come in. Um, knowing there will be more enrollment packets coming in and there will be more people dropping. Um, in my conversations with our principals, I know um, first grade is super tight, possibly out of space, just based on the information we have right now, and third grade is getting really close. And so we'll be monitoring those numbers between now and August 1st, but again, we won't know the true impact of our enrollment numbers till honestly probably the August 15th board meeting. But one of the thing, one of the, part of the conversation we need to have on the first is um, the principals and I will look at some different scenarios and, and give you some things to think about. But it will be um, if we're over, do we want to open whole classrooms? Do we want to look at split classrooms? Um, you know, if it's like last year and it's a two-three, which building does it make most sense for it to be housed in? Um, and so we will start that conversation August 1st, but again, we won't have hard numbers. Um, we, won't, we won't have hard numbers until the September board meeting. So yeah, after school starts. Um, because there are a lot of families that when they see the yellow bus going by, you know, for the first time, they, they know it's time to go and they'll, they'll come down, school bus. Um, so, um, and I can show you our enrollment data from last year. It really didn't start stabilizing until September um, because we also carry no-shows for 10 days. And so our numbers um, are very often the highest they'll be all year on the first day of school just because of the way we carry numbers. And so I won't get into it tonight, but we have, we have lots of options um, for how we want to respond to that. Are they, I'm assuming, uh, siblings? Um, yes, and I was trying to, um, uh, can't we deny two if there's needs or whatever? Special. Special. Well, that would be if we had to hire, if we if we had to hire more personnel for, um, but they they do not. So. Other questions, discussion. So this would put us in the ten percent. We're already at the 10%. Yes, and the ones we approved at the June meeting, we were within the 10% as well. You're already there. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But yes, we are within the 10% for both of these students. So um, the, the board can say yes or no right now. The board can table it and let the parents know. We'll decide closer to time. What is your recommendation? My, I like consistency. Yes. And in the two years since I've been here, I don't know that we have declined um, anyone's entry. Okay. And people really want to be here because they think that we're a great option and they want what we have to offer um, for their students. Makes my heart happy. <laughs> so we have a motion on the table in a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. You have me. I'm
Well, we move that we adjourn. Second. All right. Woohoo! Robin and Brad had a second. 8.34. And... Uh,